Hello and welcome to lesson 4.12, uh, mixtures of strong acids and strong bases. When we're missing, mixing strong acids and strong bases, what we have to remember is that we have 100% dissociation, right? So that means it'll completely turn into ions. And if we have uh, acid, which is H3O plus, combining with an OH minus, what happens is if we have uh, one molecule of H3O plus and one molecule of OH minus, they will react to produce water, two molecules of water. And this is a neutralization reaction. If H3O plus is equal to the OH minus concentration, then neither acid or base is in excess. If that is the case, pH is the same as pOH, which we talked about in the last lesson, and that is equal to 7. And this is at 25 degrees Celsius. And we said that if the temperature changes, well, pH would also change. So a little review about what we're just talking about there. Uh, so the question here is, how does H3O plus and pH of pure water at 30 degrees Celsius compare to that of 25 degrees Celsius? Well, the answer is this. H3O plus is larger and pH is less. You may be asking yourself why. And in order to do that, what we have to do is look at our self-ionization of water equilibrium, where we have two water molecules uh, in equilibrium and produce H3O plus and OH minus. Remember, we said that this happens. This is very rare. It does not happen very often. Okay, and that's why the Kw value is so small. So if we change the temperature from 25 to 30 degrees Celsius, that means we create a stress on the original equilibrium. List Chatelier's principle says that an equilibrium, system of equilibrium will try to shift towards a state of equilibrium and to minimize the stress that was created upon it. So this will be a shift to the right. So that means as we shift to the right, H3O plus concentration will go up. OH minus will also go up. So it'll still be neutral, but as H3O plus goes up, uh, we would plug that value into our uh, pH formula. Re remember that it's uh, negative log H3O plus concentration, and that would give us a value of pH that is in fact, less than 7, but still would be neutral. And how does pH and pOH of pure water at 30 degrees Celsius compare to each other? Well, if it's neutral, they are equal. So let's look at some examples where we're going to have either H3O plus or OH minus in excess. First of all, we just have to explain what is happening. First of all, uh, so we kind of revisited the, this equilibrium that we talked about, H3O plus, or two water molecules in equilibrium with H3O plus and OH minus. But our statement here says if H3O plus or H minus is in excess, the following equilibrium has minimal effects on our solution. And this is why. So first of all, if we look at the Ka value, also known as Kw, this value is very small. So that means the product concentrations, because remember, uh, any KEQ is products over reactants. We have a very, very small amount of H3O plus and OH minus. So because these concentrations are so small, they are uh, insignificant. Okay? Remember, it's 0 0.000001 or 10 to the power of negative 7 concentration for H3O plus or OH minus. Uh, reason 2. If we add something in excess, well, let's just talk about H3O plus. If we were to increase H3O plus, what it would do to the above equilibrium, it would force it to the left because H3O plus would be... Um, uh, a stress on the equilibrium. When it moves to the left, it will reduce the amount of OH minus, which was already very small. It was 10 to the power of negative 7. So if we uh, reduce OH minus by adding excess H3O plus, it will become even more insignificant. Right? The same would be true if we added OH minus, but it would be the opposite explanation. So we can say that our calculations like 
that we're going to be doing today are very much like what we just did in 4.11. But we're going to combine something else. Uh, if we're adding two mixtures, what we have to realize, well, if we look at this example, what we have uh, is 25 mils of BaOH2, and we have 125 mils of HCl. What you should realize is that, well, first of all, uh, some one of our substances is going to be neutralized a bit. Plus, we also have a dilution situation because we have now at the final volume, we have uh, 150 uh, milliliters. So there's two ways to do this type of question, but let's start one way. First thing we want to do is we write our dissociation equations for these strong bases and strong acids. The important thing here is uh, that we can't miss is that BaOH2, when it dissociates, it produces two moles of OH- minus for every one mole of BaOH2. HCl is the one to one to one ratio. So again, recall that we had this uh, formula to determine um, the concentration of something if it is diluted or concentrated, uh, change in concentration basically. So M2 stands for our final concentration or our concentration at the end. And M1 is our concentration at the beginning. So let's look at each thing separately. First, if we talk about our OH minus concentration, first of all, we take the coefficient of 2 from in front of the OH minus. We multiply it by the concentration of BaOH2, which was 0 0.420, because remember we said we would have twice as much OH minus as BaOH2. Uh, we multiply that by the initial volume which is 25 mils and the final volume. Remember the final volume is 25 plus 125. And we said before when we first looked at this formula that if we have milliliters on the top and milliliters on the bottom they will cancel each other out and we don't have to convert these two liters. But if you feel that you want to do that, uh, feel free to do that. You'll still get the same answer. So our OH minus concentration is 0 0.0140 molar. We do the same type of calculation with H3O plus, and we get these values from HCl. So HCl concentration is 0 0.120 molar. Its initial volume is 125 milliliters, so that goes on the top. That's its initial volume, or volume at the beginning. The final volume here is 150. So we calculate that and we see that the H3O plus concentration is 0 0.0100 molar. But remember, what's happening here is we're having a neutralization reaction. And what we want to do is take away the larger number from the smaller number. That means that we had more OH minus. So if we take away 0 0.140, from 0 0.0100, we get an excess concentration of OH minus of 0 0.0040. So what were we asked before? Was it POH or pH? Um, oh yeah, that's right, POH. So remember what we do for formula for pOH, we use the negative log function. We have just determined the OH minus concentration. We get 2.3979. pH is 14 minus our pOH, which is 2.3979. And if you recall, I believe at the beginning we had two sig figs in our initial calculation. So we should have two sig figs in our final answer, which is 11.60. So the other method that we do is you convert to moles first. And whichever one makes sense more sense to you is the way you should try to do it. For me, some way, for some reason, the way my brain works, I find that this makes more sense to me. So first of all, what we have to do is we have to turn, determine how many moles we have in each uh, sample. If we look at the moles of OH minus, when here we do have to convert to liters because remember what uh, capital M, which stands for molarity, it's the same as moles per liter. So if we have moles over liter and we multiply that by liters, the liters will cancel out. So we cannot leave this as milliliters. Uh, 
when we plug in what we know, the concentration of the OH- minus was 2 times 0 0.0420. We multiply it by our volume, which is in liters, and we get an answer of 0 0.00210 moles. We do a similar calculation for H3O+. Plus. Again, concentration multiplied by the volume. The concentration here is 0 0.0120. Our volume is 0 0.125 liters. And we get an uh, answer of 0 0.00150 moles, H3O+. Plus. So again, what we see here is an excess of OH-. minus. We subtract, subtract the larger number, or small. We subtract the smaller number from the larger number, and we see that we have an excess of OH minus 0 0.00060. We then plug that into our what is molarity, which is moles over liters. We have a specific volume. Uh, we have a specific amount of moles. Moles divided by liters gives us concentration. We have 0 0.0040 molar OH minus. And what you should see now is the last two steps are just like the last two steps in the previous uh, example. We did this POH calculation and this pH calculation are exactly the same. So that's it. It's a little shorter today. Uh, so we are basically wrapping up the acid base uh, calculations assignment today. We're working on page 20. Here's the have been questions that go along with today's lesson.